across our organization, we have a number of operating mechanisms. One of those is RCAs. The RCAs, or root cause analysis methodology that we have, is very specific. Uh, around how we address issues when we have a disruption for our customers. It's really a safe and collaborative environment for people to get together, not feel like they're being accused of anything, just talk about the details and then produce action items to hopefully prevent recurrence. When there's a customer incident, customers want to understand, did Rackspace have a process, did we violate that process, and did we fix what the hole is in that process? Uh, that gives the customers the assurance that we have completed the problem and fixed the issue. We had, back in 2010, I believe, a number of very small level outages for customers where a power cord came loose from the back of a device, causing downtime for those customers. We held a very specific RCA around how do we keep this from ever happening again. We identified a power cord on the market that literally locks itself in place. That's how you get to root cause and eliminate the issue from ever happening again. And that's the, that's the ultimate goal here. So the roles in the RCA process, uh, there's mainly five of them. The, the first one is the requesters, because that can be any racker. Most oftentimes, though, it's either an account manager that hears from a customer, or it is a particular team member that knows that uh, a key issue's happened and, and they're going to initiate the process. Once you get into the RCA session, there's basically three roles that are involved in there. The facilitator, right? So that's the racker who's leading the RCA, who help make sure that actions are real things that can actually be accomplished uh, and setting real timelines for those actions. A good facilitator keeps an RCA discussion on track. It means they make an honest effort to push the conversation towards something productive. The RCA scribe is someone who is a primary method of writing down information and making sure the RCA is documented. Frequently the facilitator is roped into a deeper discussion or is keeping something on track. A scribe is keeping track of everything that happens in that room and all the discussion. The other members sitting around the table are our participants and those are some really important people because sometimes that's the person who pulled the wrong plug. Could be an account manager that tells us what the customer is looking for. But then ultimately over all of that is what we call the problem sponsor. So they're a direct and above who has taken ownership of this and will carry it through from start to finish which means all the accidents are complete and leadership has been briefed. You have to start off with an overview and get everybody on the same sheet of music. And that doesn't necessarily mean a detailed timeline, we're talking big sweeping concepts. And then from there we develop what's called a problem statement. It's one single statement in a sentence that is really broad enough to encompass all the pertinent issues but narrow enough to be specific to produce action items. Then we take that overview and break it up into six buckets so that we can sort of think about things more concisely and sort of get us heading towards thinking about action items and how we're going to write them. We have two things here, right? Assignment issues, right? For the queue, but also over here, we have mailroom tech working on coffee maker. So we all know that that's a problem. We've assigned the wrong person to it. So that's like equivalent to saying we've got an L1 working on an L4 job or something like that. There's just the experience isn't there or the relevance and all that type of stuff. The next step is really an iterative process called the five whys where you keep asking why from the problem statement of why things happened. The benefits of the five why approach is really that you're not trying to solve a problem all at one time. It's an iterative approach. You're working through it one piece at a time. Now the real benefit is getting away from solving for a symptom and actually getting to that root cause, which is an actionable item. And so a lot of times we'll have themes around that, like uh, a theme of escalation, like did, was there a problem of talking to the right people? Did we not have the proper plans and policies in place and can we write some of those that are new? Ultimately though, the last step is to write those action items assign them to key people that are in the room and then create up a, come up with a reasonable due date. Action items are, in my opinion, the most critical outcome of the RCA process. They are the items which the rackers in that RCA believe will prevent future incidents, and it's critical that they get accomplished on time. There is enough similarity in the work that we do at Rackspace, not just in terms of the maintenance as we perform, but also in the way that our tools work. And so adhering to the 90-day limit on action items helps ensure that the same issue doesn't happen again. It ties directly back to what's critical and important about operational discipline. 
our central repository for all our RCAs is what we call Nexpress. Nexpress as a tool is a best-in-class RCA facilitation tool that allows multiple, multiple users and multiple rackers to see the process happening in real time and they don't have to be in the same room as the session. As the RCA is taking place in a room, uh, all of the main topics that are being covered in the structured process are all being filled out in the tool. So it's on demand, real time, and it's getting loaded in there. When it's saved, anybody immediately after the RCA, key leaders can go back and pull that RCA up and look at it at any given time. All the action items that are created are handed off to another program called Quasar. So it's an action item viewer and tracker. The important part of that is that it sends out reminders of when someone's not only been tasked, but when it's a week prior, the day that it's due, and then there's some sort of past due escalation emails that come out of that too. So it really helps us manage the process, but it also helps for accountability. Every time I present operational discipline to customers, I highlight our RCA process. And customers just light up with the diligence that we apply. They'll, they'll stand up, they'll get closer to the screen, they'll take notes furiously. They wanna know how they can do the same at their shop. Fanatical support is about being an extension of our customers and taking complete ownership of every issue. The RCA process is key to this ownership. The corollary then is that the RCA process is key to fanatical support.